from Chapel Hill Vintage Jewels and I'm here with Courtney in my studio. We're at the very end of 2017 and through this year we have completed several videos on YouTube. Um, under Chapel Hill Vintage Jewels we did Hollycraft, Kramer, Weiss, Coral, Regency, Obey, and Trafari, which I think is a really good start. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're not going to talk about any specific designer. I'm going to talk real briefly, this is going to be a short video, on some of the questions that I get asked most frequently. Whether they come in from Facebook, whether they come in directly from my website, or people who email me because they have my address. But these are the questions I get asked the most often. All right, one of the things that I get asked often is how do I clean my vintage jewelry? Either you found something in, at you know a, a consignment store or you purchase something online and you get it and you want to know, you know, how do I clean this? The first thing that I want you to know about is this. And this I didn't actually know about it myself till relatively recently, but it's called the Sunshine Polishing Cloth. And you can use this on vintage costume jewelry or you can use it on your fine jewelry and it cleans everything really well. This is how it comes in the package, little sheet like this. You can buy these on Amazon. I think that's probably the easiest place to find them. But it comes, it's clean. Now this one's never been used so it comes like this. But here you get your pin and you get, it's got tarnish on the back. So watch what happens when I just rub this just a little. See what happens? So it ends up looking like this, and you can use this over and over and over again. When it gets dark like this completely, you cannot wash these, you have to go and purchase another, but they work really, really well on silver, gold, and like I said, vintage costume jewelry. If your jewelry has prongs to it, before you go and you put it, any water into it, just take a soft toothbrush and, and try to get around the outside of the prong setting or, or the bezel setting that it has and clean it that way first. And then lastly, um, I use something that's called, this one's in a little container to make it easy for me, but it's called Whirly's Wonder. And it's a spray and you can use it on your costume pieces and spray and then use the um, the little toothbrush and get it clean that way. You don't want to leave any moisture on your vintage costume pieces. So I will actually put them on an absorbent pad and let them dry. But if, if I've had to clean it quite a bit, then I will take a hair dryer on a very low setting and I'll dry it that way just to make sure there's no moisture left. Because if, if there is, it, it could pit um, the metals that are associated, you know, around around the piece. So those are just a few ideas, you know, kind of in levels of start with the, the cloth, go to the toothbrush, then, then lastly go to a, a spray cleaner. People use Windex, people soak them in Mr. Clean. I don't, I don't use those, but I'll tell you there are vintage jewelry dealers who swear by those as the way, the best way to clean jewelry. Um, the next one that I uh, get asked frequently is how do I replace this stone that's fallen out? And really there's, there's two uh, scenarios. First you have a stone that may be pasted in, and then you have a stone that could have prong setting. And if it's fallen out, it's most likely because one of the prongs broke off. So what I'm going to talk to you about is how to glue in something that's, it, it replace the glue that's been there. The glue is old, these, some of these pieces 50, 60, 70 years old, it's not a bad thing, but it happens, the glue dries out and the stone falls out. And it will happen because it happens all the time. I have a, a whole area set up upstairs in my craft room, you know, for repairing and replacing stones. But the biggest, the most important thing is what kind of glue you use. You don't use just any kind of glue because it's very important that it clear it it dries clear. This is what I use. It's called GS Hypo Cement. It's got a really fine pin on the end to help you just put a couple of drops of the glue, put the rhinestone back in, 
and leave it alone for a little while and it'll be perfect. The other one that you can find more easily is Walmart. Walmart has this. It's E6000 and this one is really strong, dries clear. I just prefer this one. Um, let's say you lost your stone. It's not the end of the world, but you do want to replace it because it looks better that way. I use an online uh, website called mrstones.com and I will just order the color and the size and it comes in little bags like this. You can do one or two at a time, although there is a minimum order um, on Mr. Stones, but they do a great job. They have color charts for you and, and help you with measuring so that you get exactly the right stone that you need to fix your beautiful jewelry. Another question that I get asked often is, I have my aunt's jewelry, my mother's, my grandmother's, fill in the blank, and I want to know if there's any value to it. This one is kind of a complicated because, you know, you could have multiple pieces, it could be in a pile. How it was kept um, is important. If it's all in a, in a big plastic bin, then you know, what, what's the likelihood there's going to be diamonds or something in that? Um, probably not. But the first thing to do is to really, you know, make an attempt to sort it out yourself and see if you absolutely have to have, and I've said this before many times in my videos, you have to have a jeweler's loop to be able to look at the back of the jewelry and see if there's any marks. Does it say 10K, 12K, 14K, 18K, platinum? Okay, that's all fine jewelry and needs to be separated. On the costume side of things, you take it, you feel it. You know, are my beads likely plastic or glass? Separate those. Um, is there, you know, people will come, will you take a look at this for me? Well, as a dealer, knowledgeable dealer, I'm both fine and costume, I, can do it on an hourly basis, but there's not a lot of people um, out there who are going to do that. If you have a piece that you think is really valuable, the best thing is to take it to a, a certified jewelry appraiser who will charge you for it, but will give you a written appraisal on exactly what you have. So there's a lot of legwork involved in this, and the you know the answer I guess I have is this: this isn't a short answer. It just depends on whether we're talking fine jewelry, vintage, and in the vintage side of things, is it just plastic jewelry or is it designer signed jewelry? You know, those are the variables. Here's one I got on my Facebook uh, website, which is called Chapel Hill Vintage Jewels. And it, his name was Lawrence and he was from Spain. And he was saying, I wanna sell, I'm a teacher. I wanna sell vintage jewelry on the side. How do I start? How do I research jewelry so I know what I have? And, and how do I clean vintage jewelry? Well, we covered how you clean it, but the research side of things and really you know, getting familiar with what's out there, what's selling, what price points are they selling at? You have to spend time online. I think that's the absolute best way to get started. Um, looking at what's on eBay, and you know, don't don't get. There's a couple of issues you have to watch out for when you use eBay as a source. Number one, there's a lot of inaccurate information out there. Um, secondly, just because they're asking a certain price for it doesn't mean they're going to get it. So there is a way to do an advanced search on eBay so you can actually see what's sold. And that's very, very helpful information. Etsy, Etsy is a site that has a certain price point and you don't negotiate over it. So you can see what they think their jewelry is worth. Um, and of course, Ruby Lane, this, the online site that I'm at, um, tends to be a little bit higher end jewelry you know, not maybe the very beginner's pieces, but some of the really special pieces. And um, it also is a good source. It's a, it's a fixed fixed price on Ruby Lane, just like Etsy is. eBay is, you know, as you know, it's auction kind of thing. So um, just Google searching things. Let's say you find a, a name on the back of a piece of jewelry. Google it first and see what comes up. 
So lots to do with the research side of things. The other thing that I have, how do I learn about different jewelry? I get the books, I go to the reference books, and for Christmas this year, I probably got five different reference books for jewelry, which is something that I love to do. You know, get myself a cup of coffee or tea and, and sit down and, and read a jewelry book. I got one on Bakelite, I got one on Elsa Scaparelli, I got one on the jewels that were sold at Julian's auction, um, the Joseph that were used in all the movies. Um, but there's, there are jewelry reference books on every category of vintage costume jewelry. So I've got a big library on that. You can go to the library, pick some of them up, look through them, see if they're worthwhile before you go purchasing them all. Um, last question I have here is, I have a piece of jewelry with a mark on it. How do I find out what that means? All right, back to the to the loop. You have to really look it through a loop and see what it says. Google it. That's number one. You know, I've seen people on Facebook ask questions like, the back of my brooch says 925. What does that mean? Well, you don't have to ask anybody that. Just Google it and you'll see that's a mark for sterling silver or American sterling silver. Um, so first up is Google it. There is a Facebook group called Antique and Vintage Jewelry Detectives Identification, Discussion, and Study. You can ask people. If you want to just throw it up there and say, I've seen this, I don't know what it means, they will give you a recommendation on where to go. They'll either tell you what it is or they'll tell you where to go to get the answer. So these are just some of the questions that I get over and over um, on vintage costume jewelry. There aren't any stupid questions, so don't ever feel like you, you know, can't ask people, especially on Facebook groups, um, anything that you want to about, and, and, and that goes for my own site too, Chapel Hill Vintage Jewels on Facebook. Go ahead and ask whatever you want and I will try to get you an answer quickly. Um, remember that Chapel Hill Vintage Jewels is three things. It's a, it's a shop online at Ruby Lane. I've got a Facebook page where I post a lot of the things that I'm, I'm looking at or what I'm researching at the moment and some different um, articles that I find that might be interesting. And then of course, our Courtney and I have these videos that we're doing to educate you and, and bring you more information about the specifics of the designers. And we'll continue to do that in 2018. So have a great New Year's and we'll be back in 2018 with more videos. Thanks.